Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be making a random snack selector in the style of the which Disney character are you or which Pokemon are you or any of these random what are you filters that you're currently seeing on Instagram. And we're going to do this using a runtime value and a simple control to start the animation or randomizer going. So what I've already done is I've just created, or well, sourced rather, uh, some images uh, to use as my snack randomizer um, gallery, essentially. So I'm gonna go to add asset, add my animation sequence, and I'm just gonna call this snack selector, just to, because I like to name things as I go along. Go to texture, choose file, and I'm gonna choose my five images here. Uh, there was a fourth one, so but I deleted that one because I wasn't quite happy with the image. So I've actually only got five selections here. You could have as many as you want. The more you've got, the more random and the more options the user could have from this, essentially. So go nuts. I've only chosen a very small pool. So my random or my options are going to be quite limited because of that. I'm going to hit open to bring those in. And what that should do is it should create a animation texture file. So we've got these five frames here as a texture sequence that link to my snack select animation sequence down here. I'm going to enable the randomizer and I'm just going to turn off the loop for now. So I want this randomizer to appear above the user's head, again, mimicking a quite popular filter style at the moment. I'm going to add my face tracker into my scene and then add a plane to that making sure my plane is a child of my face tracker. And I'm just going to move the tracker above the head and just scale this up a little bit. Now what I've done is I've also created a graphic to uh, sort of have the question on it. So I'm actually also going to import that. So I'm going to import from my computer the uh, image I've created. So if I just uh, import it here, which is the what is your favorite uh, snack image, which is down here. And I just created that in Illustrator. You could create it in Photoshop or Paint or whatever program you want. And I'm going to use that as a material. So I'm going to select my plane. I'm going to call this my um, question plane. Create new material. Choose this new material. Change it to be flat. Choose a texture to be my question. And I'm also going to rename my material again because I like to keep things named the same for naming convention purposes. So now we should have our one plane, which would be our question above our head. I'm going to adjust the scale a little bit and reposition it a bit. So it's just above the head like so. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to select this plane hit Command D or Control D to duplicate. I could also right click and hit duplicate that way. And this one is gonna be my answer plane. So rename that to answer. I'm going to create another new material. And this new material, I'm gonna also change to be flat. And it's gonna be my animation sequence. There we go. Uh, and I'm actually just for now going to turn back on my animation just so you can see it looping like so. So at the moment we should have these two planes and I want to make them roughly the same size and roughly the same position. Again, this is down to your personal preferences. So now we have our two planes. We now need to start actually giving it some controls. So I'm going to go to view, show, patch editor. And we're going to create a toggle. So I'm going to add in a screen tap. Now this could be, again, any number of options. If you wanted this to be something linked to the face tracker, you could have it as a gesture. So quite commonly, people will choose the sort of head shake or sort of nod action to kind of trigger this. I'm just going to do a screen tap because again, it's easy to show you in a, um, a video and emulate it without me having to dig out my mobile phone to uh, show this. 
So I'm going to use my screen tap. I'm going to link it from my tap option to a switch. And this switch is going to basically toggle between these two planes. So I want my I want a not gate. And I want one of them to not appear first. So I want the answer visibility linked to my not. And my question also linked to this switch. Now, this might be the wrong way around, we'll soon see. So yeah, I've worked, in fact got the wrong way around, so just link that to that, and that to that. So I want my answer to not be visible to begin with, so it's not visible here, and I want my switch to be visible, so hence this not inverses it to be visible, if that makes any sense. So now if I was to tap the screen, it will toggle between the two and hide the animation here, which we're now going to start controlling. So the way that these effects are typically ran without using JavaScript is using a timer. And the way we're going to use a timer in this is we're just going to use the actual runtime of the application to trigger it. So I'm going to add an offset patch. So this offset patch will take in our runtime value and allow us to obviously uh, adjust it by a set amount of time. Uh, but also, the most importantly, it gives us this option here for a reset. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have this screen tap linked to my reset or whatever my interaction would be. Then I want my offset linked to a less than. Uh, and again, this could be a more than or equals to, depending on how you want this to be controlled. And link this to a loop animation. And this loop animation, I want to make sure the duration is fairly small. So at the moment it's one, so it only play for about one second, which actually make the animation play quite slowly. I actually want this to play quite fast. So I'm going to adjust it to, let's say 0 0.05 for now. Again, I could always play about these values afterwards. And I'm going to link my looped value to a random patch. And my end value will be the number of options. So in my case, I have five options. If you have more, you would change this to be a high number, obviously. I'm going to link this to a round. I want this to be a round number to make uh, our lives a lot easier for the current frame to be chosen. I'm going to go to my snack selector, choose my current frame, link this to my round frame here. And I'm going to make sure that when my less fan is set to not be zero, so this is how many seconds it will be um, running before it sort of stops. So let's say eight seconds. So as long as my animation is less than eight seconds, it will play. So if I just hit the screen tap to reset it. So it will ask me, what is your favorite snack? I tap the screen, it'll start the counter. It'll go for about eight seconds. And once that, uh, when it's ran for a lot longer than eight seconds, it'll stop. And it'll choose a random frame and give me my op uh, option here. If I wanted anything else to appear, like particles to play or sound to play, I would simply link it from my loop animation looped here. So when my loop animation has completed, I would get it to play an action from this point. So as you can see, I can choose my snack. It'll go through these options. In fact, I might actually reduce my less than value to be a bit lower because that's a bit uh, long. So let's say, four seconds. So what's this my favorite snack? My favorite snack is apples apparently. So this is a very simple way of creating a option a selector. So this is a kind of how these quizzes are typically done if they're not using JavaScript. And like I said, there are other ways we can adjust these values here. So we could adjust this to be a more than, and we could have other effects play once the animation or option has been selected. Uh, another way around this would be to have multiple planes with different um, images on, and then using an option picker to say when this option is, let's say, one, 
um, or equals exactly one, then show this plane, or if it equals two, show this plane. And we've covered that in the let's get random video that will be linked at the end of this video and in the description down below. So I hope this has been useful to you and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.